skills and vocabulary too. I've been hitting the distant edition, it's all brand new. You're through. I'm in the planetary and like Doctor Who. So who? Fuck your beef, no relief. I step on stage, girls scream like I'm Keith. Yo, everybody, we are back at it again. Ring time pro wrestling is in the building. It's Keith and Keisha. Keisha, say hi to the people. Hey! And, you know, I'm always excited when I get to do the show. <sighs> like, my soul rejoices. is rejoicing right now. Like, all of it. <laughs> all of it is just excited. I am so excited. Yeah, uh, we have been... It was gone two weeks. We came back last week. We previewed SummerSlam. We are now here on the back end of SummerSlam. And That's to right. get you guys ready for the new era, the new brand extension. Both brands are gearing up for their own individual pay-per-views going forward. They will not come together again, I think, until Survivor Series. So going for the next few pay-per-views are going to be them on their own, showing off their own individual talents. Uh, we're going to go through the new titles that's coming out. There's, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Like, wrestling is crazy. Right? Yes. And, and the WWE got enough content to lock down your whole week, Keish. Exactly. Also, I was slightly confused. I thought tonight was Thursday. Like, I was going to pop. I got pop TV now. Crazy. So I'm like, okay, I'm about to go see what's on the TNA. Oh, it's, it's Wednesday. Yeah. Before I got pa- before I panicked and thought they was canceled, but no, it's Wednesday. <laughs> so it was the NXT Cruiserweight Classic night, right? Right. And uh, you know, th- things happen. So uh, I'm, t- I'm gonna check out some of that Cruiserweight Classic. But like I said, Keish, without further ado, uh, we're gonna get to our shows, get to what's going on. Uh, it's been a crazy couple of weeks in like our personal lives. We moving. Keisha got a new job. Yes. It, it, it's bananas, everybody. So, uh, Keish, NXT Takeover. We're back in Brooklyn for the second time. Uh, me and you watched this together for the first part of it, and then had to watch it again later separately. Yes, that's but, exactly um, what happened. Uh, let's let's break down these batches, please. Oh my god. Uh, uh, Austin Aries uh defeated. No way, Jose. No way, Jose. <laughs> oh, this is when you call me a uh no way Jose hater. By the way, I very rarely, I very very resent. Thank you. That is not true. I am just, I just have whatever. Look, man, you just said on this show. You gotta remember, <laughs> this is a, a audio recorded podcast. You said on this show you can't stand like you just don't get it. Like, I don't, man. I don't. I, okay. I, like. man, I, I don't know how you cannot get it. I don't understand how when that music come on and that dance and that infectious. No way, Jose. No way, Jose. It's it's infectious. You saw him. I'm you, not infectious. You like Austin either. Aries. You, you <laughs> like Austin Aries. You you just a hate. It was about man Izzo. We got some haters. <laughs> You got some haters. I can't help the fact that when I hear that music and everybody's saying, no, wait, Jose, I'm not one of them. Like, I can't do it. I just can't. Like, I don't even know why, to tell the truth. I just don't like it. Like, I'm just kind of like, no, yeah, you're right. No way, Jose. I can't take this. Like, <laughs> stop the music, please. It's funny because I love him as a wrestler, though. Like, when he's in the ring, he's awesome. But then you just talked about the the music and the interest, and I'm just kind of like, no, mm-mm. I'm not doing this. We're just not doing this. Mm-mm. So. I mean, here's the thing. Okay, him and Austin Aries turned a very good match. And I don't know if people really thought that that was going to happen. But they turned in a very good match together. Um, also was able to overcome that size advantage of Jose. Jose did show, though, he has the ability to develop a slight mean streak, which I liked. Um, I, it was close. I I didn't know who was going to win the match. I didn't either, but did you see that slap? Oh, oh, yeah. that hurt me. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in there because I was 
so intrigued by that. I was like, man, ah, like that hurt everybody's face. I mean, <laughs> I think mean, it but, was uh, ridiculous, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, we saw Ares defeat Jose. Did decide to attack Jose after the match just because he just wanted to be a bully in front of 15,000 people. I get it. I didn't agree with that. That was just awful. But, of course, you know, you're not supposed to because that's the time to think so. so yeah. But then Jose got a little relief because the uh, man who's been on the show for about a year is back, Hideo Itami, uh returned, and he told Ares to stop that shit. Exactly. And Aries thought, like, man, who is you? Where, 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 where you been? I, I, hey, man, I'm, I'm an up and cover around. Cheer. And he politely got that GTS. Exactly. From a dude in a suit. <laughs> he, was, he, he, had, he had a GTS in a suit. You know how disrespected I would be if that was me, right? <laughs> yo, I'd be like, yo, I'm going to hit you with this GTS, but let me go put on my, my, my play clothes. <laughs> Exactly. My, my, my buddy finally got, got my church clothes messed up. Did you see the shoes? Like I was, yeah. there, I was sitting there watching. Like man, he got the whole get up going. He's really finna <laughs> get in this ring and and actually fight. Like is he serious? Like no, nah, I'm gonna need him to just kind of stand on the side and look pretty or something. Like I can't. Oh, serious? Serious is a heart attack. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, Tommy's back. Uh, so the next feud, of course, is going to be Austin Aries and Hideo Tommy, which I am looking forward to. Oh, that's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be physical. I think the styles match up. I think they match up size-wise. Like, everything, I think, it works out kind of perfect. Um, we saw the debut at Ember Moon, uh, defeat Billy Kay. When I say a strong debut, Keish, one of the better debut matches I watched, and that lady got skills. She does. Oh my gosh, she was awesome! Like I was now, so excited. She was trained by the legendary Booker T, and she broke into his uh, promotion. Uh, legendary Skandar Akbar uh, also was a part to part the promotion. So you know, things happen. Uh, the young lady grows up. She gives her shot at NXT, and. Man, she puts in a hell of a performance. And I don't know what that move she did off the top rope that kind of ended like a stone cold stunner. They're calling it a twisting stunner. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what to call it. I was just like, because oh, no one sh- knows what to call it. The commentators yeah, like, were stunned, like the crowd was stunned, other wrestlers were stunned. Like nobody knows what to call it. But then, but remember John Cena. I had hit that springboard stunner. No one knew what to call it before either. So. <laughs> yeah, but let, 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 let's let's look at this here right now. Uh, that was one of the most athletic feats I've ever seen in my life. That yeah. springboard Cena need to be took it out back and shot. Like <laughs> I, I don't ever want to see that movie again. Like literally, moves should have to be registered <laughs> in paper. And you can take them out back and shoot them. Because I want to take that move out back and shoot it. Like, let's just get it out of this misery. It, let's get you away where you cannot hurt anybody anymore. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's what happened. I agree. It wasn't. It wasn't. But, but this was a work of art. That move that Amber Moon hit was greatness. I, I was. It had the whole crowd hype. Like, right. everybody was hype over that. They was still talking about it, like, days after the fact. We, we're talking about it now. I, it was greatness. I think that needs to be her finisher, personally. They need to give it a proper name that fits her, and, and that needs to be her finisher. Like, they need to just go ahead and allow her to keep doing it. So, I, I'm all of it. I'm an Amber Moon fan. I am. And not because Billy Kay just looks, looks like she just came out, like, and I just wanted to throw up, like, <laughs> but Amber Moon, I, she has, I feel like personality-wise, she has it. Like, she hasn't cut a promo yet or nothing like that, so I can't really comment on any of that yet. But so far, I feel like she has it. She's going to be greatness, and I can't wait to see how far she gets. So, yay, and I mean that, all of that. Yeah, no, I I think she's incredibly talented. 
Um, third match. Bobby Roode, former TNA superstar, former TNA world champion, defeats Andrade Alamas. Keish. Glorious. <laughs> it was glorious. And yes, I'm using that word because that's exactly the best way to describe it. I want to go. Can I enter somewhere like that? Like, I just want, I just want to walk into a party or like just come into like a space or something about me and just come down from the Raptors like that. Like that was just awesome. I swear. Like it, everything about his entrance was greatness. Somebody was saying, it's funny because of course I was reading online comments and someone had happened to mention that they said it was like Ric Flair ish. I actually don't have a problem with that. Like, I, I, they they said it as an insult. I actually took it as a compliment towards <laughs> towards the entrance. Like I thought it was fine. I actually thought it was greatness. I didn't see anything wrong with it. People were actually some people were actually like, "Oh my god, I hated that." I'm like, "Why? Are you serious?" Those people are have no taste. They don't. They're awful. And they probably should have uh, they hands tied behind their back and duct tape for their mouth. But. <laughs> I was just saying, Keish, incredible. Like I thought he was more over than he's been his, than he was ever ever in TNA. Right. Yeah. Like people dug it, man, and they was rooting for him. I mean, make this clear: Alabas was the baby face, supposedly. Exactly. But what? Not. I would say this too: they were in Brooklyn. And it was an NXT show. That crowd is a lot smarter than a lot of other crowds. And I think they kind of like made sure that those two courts have some representation, right? Right. So uh, I, I got it, but it was funny yeah. because Rude was supposed to be, Rude was the heel in this match. But as soon as the song hit, everybody knew the words already. Like people were singing from left to right up and down through all the way through the arena and mm-hmm. I was at I was watching it singing it myself. It was awesome. Like <sighs> nobody is it's crazy because Rude is over just that fast. And look how long it took him to get even close to that when he was right, right. so I mean I I'm excited for him. He can get out of there and just like it's funny because he can get out there and assault your mama, but then like his music hits and everybody's like, "Glorious!" And I'm like, "Seriously?" <laughs> I'm like, yeah. He called Brooklyn the armpit of New York. <laughs> yes, it got away with it. It got away with it. I didn't want to laugh. I thought that was horrible. I was like, "Are you serious?" Like. This is like an armpit of New York. I'm more of a hat. And then he comes out, and everybody's like, yeah. And they're all cheering, wow, being rude. And I'm like, he just called you the armpit of New York. Like, are you serious? They ain't oh, there. they was like, shit. He talking about the other people. They ain't talking about me. <laughs> My building just cost $20 million. I just put a whole new square room in it. Exactly. Like, no, we're not. Be looking at the next person like, no, he's talking about you. He's talking about me. No, mm mm. He's talking about those over there. He's not talking. About, he's not referring to me. We're not talking about that. But right. That that his match was awesome. Right. The match was greatness. I I was so intrigued <laughs> by it all. I thought it was just all just. <sighs> I was in love with this pay per view from start to finish. So let's continue, please. Okay, no doubt. Um, like I said, Bobby Roode, Heroes Reception. Uh, the crowd dug him and loved him, uh, and at that as they should. Right. Um, the revival uh, defeated Gargano and Ciampa to retain their uh, tag team titles. Keish, I'm gonna say this might be match of the night. I might have to agree with you. I mean, everybody has a right to their own opinion, but I think this one was match of the night. Like, I think that these guys really found the chemistry. Yeah. 
Right. And the speed and the pacing, like they beat each other up real bad. <laughs> they really did. It was awful, but it was great. Like I think the uh, the match itself was it was really skeptical. I didn't know how it was gonna go, uh, but I actually. Once I watched it, got halfway through, I was pretty impressed. It, it's the best words that I can use for for this match itself. Um, the Revival have always been a great tag team. Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, they definitely are in the vein of the Andersons. Uh, yeah. They're in the vein of maybe, maybe a little bit when Tully took over. You know what I mean, right. when was Joe part. Um, a little bit of technical difficulty I was trying to find my spot. But, uh, yeah, so we are here. I mean, Revival, like I said, I think they remind me of the Andersons. Uh, very talented. Great teamwork. They work a body part. Like a lot of a lot of psychology stuff that uh, falls off between deaf ears these days. Right. Plus, exactly. everybody wants to be a solo artist. Nobody wants to be in a group. Well, I feel like there's some groups that they broke up that they should have kept together just a little while longer. I agree. I definitely agree. So that that covers um, that um, Oscar defeats Bailey to remain the women's title, women's champion. This um, rivalry was so heated, but I loved it though because it was it was crazy to me to see Bailey. I seen a, a little aggression come out of Bailey that I didn't really, I don't think that ever happened before. You know? Like, right. I think the last time that you even seen it anywhere close is when she had the Iron Man match with Sasha right. Banks. Like, it was so intense. But I think that's what made this match so much better. Like, because mm-hmm. of how intense it really was, especially, like, the buildup and everything that came. Because it was so emotional for Bailey, you know? Like, that's the words that was used to describe it, you know, before the match and, like, um, right after. Like, it was so emotional for her. Like, she really, really needed this. And I was just kind of like, yeah, you know, but Bailey, like, you're awesome. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody agrees that she's just that great. But Asuka, it was... You can't deny Oscar her wrestling abilities. So like you there's nothing that you can take away from either woman. But it was just so awesome to see them two together again in the ring. Like I was I, you know, it's not even words to describe like the level of intensity that came out of this match. So, you know me being a, the woman. Um, <laughs> I always have to give like my utmost greatest description of how I felt watching this match, and I was hurting for the both of them. Like it was just, it was awesome. You know, I I thought that both women left everything in the ring. Of course, Oscar came out on top, but you know, you never sell Bailey short, never. No. So. No, no, I agree. Um, and you know, I knew it was time for the transition, so um, Oscar re- re- retains her title. Um, and then we get to the NXT Championship match. Samoa Joe, champion, defends his belt against Shinsei Nakamura. Um, not a lot of lopes to this one. Uh, Shinsei brought it. Yeah, from you know the ring, mean? from the ring entrance to the end. <laughs> Yo, he bought. He, hey man, he went. He went out killed on that. Like from the time he walked out to the time he left, it was nothing that he didn't have. And like, you can't. Like, I mean, who can honestly sit there and say that they weren't amazed? You know, like Shinsuke did everything he needed to win this match. Period. I mean, of course, Samoa Joe's awesome, but it was Nakamura like all the way through. Like, right. like I can't, I can't sit here and actually deny it. It was Nakamura all the way through. He had this. So, 
Um, I don't, you know, it's funny because I didn't know if I was ready for a title change just yet. I had, here's the thing. In booking the show, I didn't think there was going to be a title change. No. I felt like Joe had had the belt long enough, and I felt like, okay, Joe has been in the main event of NXT for the last four takeover shows. Right. Challenger for the world title, mind you. So I felt like, okay, he's going to, he, the last time I saw him, he won this. He loses this time, drops the belt, and then starts to move on. But, uh, no, it's just a full old thing. And like you said, most of the pace was dictated by Shinsei, who ended up going on to win and gain the most spectacular exit. You know what I mean? Right. Because, woo, we it was a good, it was a good show. It was a good show. Yeah, but it was just, I, I just have to honestly say that it wasn't one I was ready for. Right. Like, I wasn't ready for it because... I I agree with you. I don't think that Joe had the belt long enough. So it it really made me wonder why would they have him drop it so soon? You know, oh. like I was I was not prepared for that. But at the same time, I was excited to see the ending. You know, like I was excited to see the title change hands at the same time because Nakamura, like if it was anybody else I don't know if I would feel the same way I can honestly say that if it was anybody else I don't know if I could fully agree with it um I don't know if I can wholeheartedly sit here and be like yeah you know I'm so happy that happened nope I can't so I'm I'm glad that it is him and I can't wait to see how NXT plays out from here um, of course, we're going to have some new feuds. We're going to have some new challengers coming into place. It's going to continue to be an uprising uh, from here of new stuff, but that's what NXT is all about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they lock down stuff. They make sure stuff is uh, A-OK, right? Right. Ah, I think I might have to rewatch that. I think I'll watch NXT. I think I'll watch TakeOver, like, Three times. I swear I did. I kept rewinding it. Like, I kept replaying it because the interests were just greatness. The matches were just greatness. Like, an A. Like, they got an A for me. Like, I, I can't even lie about that one. I gave the whole show a full A. Like, I was like, yes. This is one of the best pay-per-views that I've seen in a very long time. And that says a lot. <laughs> that says a lot. So I'm putting that out there, you know. But it is what it is. <sighs> uh, the Barclay Center was a great place for uh, NXT TakeOver, too. You know, everybody I mean, giving there everything. Yeah, I, I, what they need to do is develop the three-day pass. So you go to SmackDown, or you go to Raw, do you go to SmackDown, Kick it for a while, maybe watch some classic, and then bam, time for the regulars. You know, basketball. Tell you, they ain't got to do it forever. Right. Just enough. And I think it'd be interesting. But, uh, yeah. So, um, Dr. Moore entrance probably was one of the greatest of all time. Man, especially what? Especially for NXT. Uh, the dude playing the violin was so cold. And, um, I already see now, I, I, it's going to be interesting how that series responds when it's no more LeBron. All right. <laughs> Did you see the boots? He had on Tim's, yeah. man. Like, <laughs> but that's it. That's in line with what we do. You know what I mean? You're right. Now, when the Reverend had on Tim's, I was thrown. But that's in line with what we do. Oh, I was excited. I can't. <laughs> it was too much. I was like, oh, my God, I'm excited. Like, I was too excited. So let right, me calm down. Right. Let me calm down. But, um, yeah, so that happened. Um, and then we go on to SummerSlam, Keish. Biggest yeah. party of the summer. Of course. Huge. Phenomenal. People everywhere. Um, uh, I think New York, 
is a great destination for this. Now, remember, before New York, it was strictly a uh, L.A. thing. Right. But they've added two extra days, like contests and all kinds of stuff. It'd be greets. This is the second WrestleMania. You would hate that. It's the first big pay-per-view since WrestleMania, and now it's still going to be kind of like a WrestleMania. <laughs> but hey, that's the point of backlash. You got to last something behind you. Right. Get back of me, Satan. But, anyway, um, yeah, so that happened. And it was a weird kind of uh, Monday. Um, it was just kind of people weaving in and out doing work and talking. Right. Uh, that's something I get to do a lot. No. Okay. So, I just uh, full disclosure that uh, it, I don't know what I'm going to say. Okay. I don't know what yeah, I just I totally I totally <laughs> scramble, right? Thank you, man. Yeah. Summer's like the biggest party of summer. Keish, I wonder how they was gonna get in eleven matches on the show. You know what? I'm surprised they got in eleven matches on the show. But right. they they cheated because they did the first hour with a with a crock pot and two to something like that. So right. it, so like they used the whole first hour, which was supposed to be like the pre show. It really wasn't a pre-show. It was like the show. Right. And what's funny is that if you go back and rewatch it, then you know how the show normally is like, I don't know, two hours and like 45 minutes or, you know, three hours or something like that. No, the whole show is four hours. Like, it just says four hours, four hours and two minutes. And I'll, And it has no pre-show. There is no pre-show. So I was like... So, we didn't do a pre-show this time. Like, of course, they still had the panel and everything, and they want to put it out like it was a kickoff show. But I'm like, but it's four hours. Like, the pay-per-view says four hours as the running time. So, I'm yeah. sitting here like, where have, I said, there's no pre-show. There was no pre-show. They just threw everything together. No, but they did. They started early and then they ran over later, right? Right. So that's where we are. Um, I'm gonna go through some of the matches till we get to where the show actually starts, right? Right. So Sheamus defeats Cesaro in the first uh, set, or they, they they best of seven series, which I thought was kind of weird. I would have went with Cesaro, but also, hey man, this is gonna be interesting. They're doing a best of seven and don't even have titles. That's what I'm saying. That's what like, I'm saying. What are we pull, competing for? Hey, man, they just repeat no being a really good program. So, uh, one of the only rest of the programs in the Deep South, they going to be a good, they just working on being a good program. Yeah, you and right about that. wrestle wherever they can and try to, you know, get leader and beater. Hey, I agree with it. You know, personally, if I was, if it was me, I'd be glad that I'm on TV. I'd be excited for the opportunity. I wouldn't even complain. I mean, what can you really say? So, yeah, I actually, but you're right. There, there is no titles involved. But does does it really have to be one? I mean, how many best of five? Well, no, I think every best of that uh, best of anything series that I've ever seen has had a title involved. So. Yeah. No, so no title involved. But also, I, like I said. I, I'll loop back into something. We'll, we'll jump around, but um, yeah, uh, Keish. Uh, how you feel? Kevin Owens and Jericho defeated Enzo and Big Cass. Oh, uh, Jer, Jer, what is it? Jericho. <laughs> yeah, I can't pronounce it. Like I'm like, what? Um, the first time, who was it that said it? Cass that said it. I was like, Jericho. They actually have a name for that, like. <sighs> just I don't know, whatever. Anyway, so yeah, that was um. That, you know what? I wasn't really too impressed by that match, to tell the truth. If really, if you ask me, I wasn't. I was. I mean, it wasn't a bad match. Don't get me wrong, but it was. It was all right. Like, it wasn't like the say, greatest thing I've seen, but you know. Honestly, sets the tone for the most of the pay per view going forward, though. Yeah, because that's how I thought about a lot of those matches. Yeah, um, you're right. You are absolutely uh, right. I was disappointed that Izzo and Cass couldn't get that big win. Um, but, you know, I get it, too. 
people have lives. People have to move old. People have to do things. Right. Uh, but, you know, and we got to do things, too. Uh, Charlotte defeated Sasha Banks for the women's title. Oh, and all so I got to say about that. Boo! Exactly. Boo! Get him on stage! Boo! <laughs> okay. I was so mad. I was so mad. I was pissed. You were the only one. Oh, I was so pissed. Had lined him up all over the tank. You ain't the only one. I was mad, man. I just couldn't. I was so pissed because I was like, really? She has a belt, not even a month. And they're already taking it back and giving it back to Charlotte? Ah, oh, why? Ah, oh, I just, I can't. Like, I was so mad. I really wanted to stop watching the pay-per-view. Like, I was like, nope, I got to do it. I got to keep watching it because I got to see it all the way through the end. But I was just done. I was done after that. It hurt my heart, Keith. It hurt my heart. Well, here's the thing. You never know who people are, what they're going to do, or what's going to happen with them. So my advice is to be nice to everybody and uh, just kind of, you know, embrace what's going on around you. (laughs) I ain't embracing that. Forget it. No. Nope. Well, yeah, I, um, I, I still boo to WWE for putting the belt back on Charlotte. But I realize so, we'll we'll get to that later too, right? Right. Um, the Miz uh, defeated Apollo Cruz to retain the IC title. Yeah. Um, Kish, I'm gonna hit you with this. It's gonna sound crazy. The Miz has quietly put together a Hall of Fame career. I'm actually surprised by that statement, and I'll tell you why. Because once you go through the Miz's accolades and actually everything that he's done, you can't disagree with that. Like, you can't. I think people see the Miz for what he is now and where he's been in, like, the last two or three years, maybe. Right. You know, recently. But I'm like, you have to actually go through his entire wrestling career. And then, then talk to me about why you disagree with that statement. Because you can't discredit him for the thing he's done. Like, you just can't. It doesn't matter. Like, if you agree with it or not, what matters is that it happened. So, I, no. I, don't, I don't disagree with what you're saying right now. Like, I seriously don't. But, yeah, no. Quiet is kept. Miz has a Hall of Fame career. Here's the thing. Multiple time IC champion, former United States champion, former tag team champion, winner of Royal Rumble, WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Right. Exactly. Because the thing is, we really don't dispatch. Uh, well, some people do it on their tickets or whatever. I don't. I just, they go, I come back a few days later, they take care of it. All right. So. Um, it's funny to me because, like, one of the things Miz always harped on was that he headlined WrestleMania. But the thing that you can't forget about is that he headlined WrestleMania. He was part of the main event in a WrestleMania. You know how many wrestlers have that dream? Like, he's already done it. He's done it, and he's went on from it, and he still is a credible wrestler to a lot of people's eyes. That's why he's the Intercontinental Champion in the first place. So, it's, it is not, to me, there is no argument to, uh, to that statement. There's no argument to be made about what his career is right now. Like, he is, to me, where he needs to be. You know, I think a lot of people actually are, they're actually, I, I've read quite a few 
um, reviews of Black The Miz that says that he needs to actually be higher than that. I think a lot of people believe he needs to be champion, but The, the Miz is like, no. And of course, I know we'll get into that later, but he's just kind of like, no, nah, I'm better than that. You know, I have this belt. I'm the Intercontinental Champion. I'm awesome. And there's nothing that anybody can say about it. And it, and he proves it when he gets in the ring. So, kudos to the Miz. I'm actually a fan. People think I'm not. I am. I am a fan of the Miz. I've always have been. He's awesome. I might have had moments where I couldn't stand him. But, you know, that's just a heel thing. Because I do. I am for one, and I'll admit it, that can get into this heel stuff real quick. Like, if you are expected to be hated, trust me, I am one person that can hate you. I know, I already know, you know, the deal with, you know, how wrestling works and all of that. But still, I'd still be like, oh, I can't stand him. I can't stand her. There was moments where I couldn't stand him, but I'm still a fan. It is what it is. And I know now, it's supposed to be one of them times. Eh, eh, no, I'm friends. So I just hated to see him. Uh, I hated to see him beat Apollo Cruz. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah, I mean, but it had to happen. I didn't right. think they were going to give the belt to Cruz that early, right? Like I no. think a lot of his his thing is is the coming out part. It was like, hey, you're going to be in a match of a certain level of magnitude or a big event. Here you go, have at it. Right. Exactly. That's exactly how it happened. Like we we've extended the lead, just don't break the car now, right? And they did. They they had a mistake, but they overcame it, and uh, they ended up in the finals. Oh, Apollo! But, but that that happened. Um, now here's my probably match of the night for me: uh, John Cena versus AJ Styles, and uh, with AJ. Uh, you know, really, really looking kind of contrite about certain things he did, whatever. Um, when it came down to, there was no Bullet Club interference. There was no extra dudes coming down to help. This was AJ by herself against John Cena. Right. And um, they they turned in a hell of a performance. We all know what AJ Styles could do, and I. I've long contended what John Cena could do with the right dance partner. AJ Styles is the right dance partner for him. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I give you that. Right. You're absolutely right. I mean, there's too, not too many people. I don't want to use the words look good, but there's not too many people that can actually, like, work with. I don't feel like can work with John Cena like AJ can. Um, I really seriously... Uh, have considering the other matches that I've seen over the years with Cena and AJ, I feel like him and AJ have done some of the best work that I've seen. You know, uh, it takes a lot. I wouldn't say it takes a lot. Let me not use those words. It takes something special to bring out the best in Cena. Like <laughs> that's. That I'm not saying that he goes out, he's mediocre, and nothing like that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is working with him is a work of art to me. Like, those are my words that I'm using to describe this. So, like, AJ has worked with so many different people. Cena's worked with so many different people. And seeing their matches beforehand, they were a little tainted. Because of the fact that it wasn't just him and AJ. It's never really been just him and AJ, you know? So, <clears throat> this was so different, but so much more. And so much more wonderful because of that fact. And the fact that AJ came out on top, to me, was even better. Um... It wasn't a uh, it I, it wasn't one of those predicted wins where it's like yeah I've seen it, it's gonna win you know whatever boo boo like I I never even considered that I actually never considered that 
I thought it was a fair fight, and it could go either way. I'm glad AJ won. I just, I don't, I don't is it is it over for them too? Like, can we say that it's over for them too, or do we we wait a minute on that? Because I think that, to me, at this point, is the biggest question of this feud between them. Because it continued on, you know, after the draft, and I thought that maybe it would end, you know, at that point. But, of course, you know, that's not the case. So, I, I just, that's the question that I have to ask is, like, does it, does it end here? Is it over now, or do it, does it continue from there? Like, what else can they do to make this continue? Of course, other than have matches with stipulations. You know, no holes barred, and this, that, and third. But, I mean, haven't they done that already? It's it's questionable. Like, that, to me, is where I was, where I, it's my pinpoint in this thing between AJ and Cena is, where do they go from here? What happens now? Um, do they continue or is it broken up? Is it over? I mean, they both want to want to pursue different stuff. AJ needs a belt at some point. So, of course, there has to be that. Cena, of course, of course is going to go after some kind of gold later on. So, is it does that where they continue that? Is it that the next chapter for them? Like, I don't know. I really don't know how to even describe it, but I thought that the match was awesome. Personally. Like, it was greatness. Don't get me wrong about that one. The match was greatness. So, that's AJ and Cena for you. Right. No, but they turned an incredible match. Um, And I'm going to keep going down the card. And uh, so we can go ahead. Um, after that, uh, the the club uh, defeats the New Day via DQ. But Big, Big John Stewart is back. And I think the New Day is going to have a lot of fun. <sighs> can I say I don't, I'm not really, I wasn't really feeling John Stewart. I wasn't. You know, he got old. Yeah, I see that. Old, old. You look like 70 out there. Yeah, and I was just kind of like, is he really that old? Like, John Cena never looked, I mean, uh, John Stewart never looked that old, ever. Like, (laughs) so I'm just sitting here like, when did this happen? Like, was there something we didn't see when he was on TV? Like, I understand. Like, how do you look that old, like, that fast? I was confused. I was so confused. Like, I really seriously was just kind of like, huh? You know? But I wasn't really feeling him being out there. Not at all. It it was just, it was weird. It was really weird. But what I was feeling was... I was feeling uh, the club's entrance with the lab coats and the the jars and the little bowls in it, and it was funny. I thought it was hilarious, but uh, I had a feeling that it wasn't going to go the way they expected in the first place. So uh, I'm so happy that the New Day is still tag team champions, and it's... I'm pretty sure that they're going to lose the belts at some point, but it just won't be right now. So that right there to me is is exciting in itself. I mean, of course the club are going to hold the titles at some point, you know, but it's just not going to be today. Like <laughs> It ain't going to be right now. So it is what it is. But I wasn't really too impressed with John Stewart bringing out the new day. I was just kind of like, are you serious? Like, this is really happening right now. I'm going to need people to stop this madness immediately. You just can't have that kind of stuff going on. So, it is what it is. 
but I know this was the the only tag team championship match of the night. So I'm glad that the titles didn't change hands. The new day and the club. I'm pretty sure this is not the end of there of them. Gallows and Anderson are gonna be out for the three members of this prestigious uh, faction in the first place. Like, they're not going to stop until they have what they want. And that's tag team gold. But we'll see what happens next. It will have something fun. Like a match, match with some real stipulations, because I can't deal. I don't know. We'll see. Let's get to the next match. Let's talk about these championship matches. Please. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah. So, uh, Dean Ambrose retains. Uh, Dolph looked okay. I mean, it was usual Dolph Ziggler stuff. Of but he, he he made the mistake that he needed to make for Ambrose to find it and exploit it and do what he had to do. Yep. All it takes is uh, one. Yeah. No, no, I mean, I completely agree with you on there. Um... So, apparently, you know, even Marie got suspended last week for violating the drug policy. So, their head attack match is going to be 3 2 But uh, Nikki Bella showed up to even the odds. Yeah. Yeah. Shocker. And, yeah. You know, slight spoiler if you didn't watch it, but I hope you watched it by now. I will hope so. Yeah. Especially with the fact that, that uh, Raw and SmackDown don't have it. Right. Sorry? Yeah, I mean, they did have watched it already. So, but, yeah. Nikki came uh, back. Everybody was yeah. excited. Yay! I mean. The heel teams won. Right. They did a good job. And, you know, it is what it is. I get a credit. I'll tell you what credit is due. They put together a hell of a, a video, a hell of a raid for us. Well, hopefully, I can, you know, keep us breathing. I I gotta ask you something, and I want to make I want to make sure I would I waited to the show to ask you because I wanted right. to get your actual opinion on this. But what do you think mm-hmm. of Alexa Bliss? Like, I I actually think she's pretty good, but I mean, yeah. I think she's good. I think she needs to polish like just about every other woman on the roster, every other man on the roster. They all need a little, need a little bit of a polish, but I think she's a solid performer. Yeah, I mean, I think she has this. I don't know if it's because of her size, but I think she has this incredible amount of aggression to her that I don't think people really they they don't see it too much. But I see it, you know. It's like she's a little Spitfire, and I'm not saying it because 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 of her height and weight and nothing like that. It's just like. She, I think she has something that's way under the line. I think it's like a, it's kind of like a holding back thing, you know. I think there's more that can be produced by her that she's just not letting happen. So, uh, I, I just, I don't know. I guess that was, I know it was a really random question, but I was watching that match in particular and then, of course, I've seen her in a match, was it, with Bailey in NXT? Yeah. And that's what made me really, that's what really got my attention with her. And I was just kind of like, okay, so I wonder what, I, I just always wanted to get your opinion on her. But um, I'm glad you gave me that. Thank you. Because it's, it's, I just needed to bounce my head off of somebody else about her like it was it's really funny but at the same time i was kind of thinking along the same lines you know so uh, i just had to throw that in there real quick you know before we got to the next match but yeah the hill team won and um i I can't say i was too excited you know uh but did, did you see naomi's outfit like all those colors and oh my god, she was kind of loud. I couldn't deal. So, but I guess that's it for her. 
And I, I don't know. I don't even really know what else to say about that. So, the Universal Championship. Are we ready? Shall we discuss this? Yes. Uh, here we go. First of all, I find it very weird that neither title was the main event. Yeah, I thought so too. But I kind of figured, I actually am not surprised that it wasn't, that neither title was the main event. I'm not even going to sit here and lie and say, oh, oh my God, it was just so shocking. It wasn't. I'm not actually surprised that it wasn't the main event. Like, once I seen that they threw this in um, earlier into the pay-per-view, I already knew what the main event was. As a matter of fact, because of how much they've been hyping it, and how much they had been talking about it, I already knew what the main event was before SummerSlam even happened. I just knew that it wasn't going to be a title match. Like it was, it, 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 it was so engraved into my mind. Like I just, there was no erasing it. So I'm not surprised by it. Doesn't make it any less, more or less a great match. It just means that it wasn't main invented, you know, which sucks. Cause I think that the, at least the universal title should have been the the, the the match to end the show. But you know, who am I? I'm just a fan. <laughs> so it is what it is. But I was expecting more out of it, but not. Not the match, just the pay per view in general. But of course, you know, that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. So, Finn Balor and Seth Rollins had one of the best matches that I have ever seen. Like, I just, they were incredible. They were. And of course, I've always loved to see the demon come down and do his thing and it's funny because I wanted to cheer for Seth too like I wanted to be on both sides and kind of be like yay you know <laughs> but uh, I was intrigued by just the chemistry itself between these two men so funny thing is uh Seth doesn't look dangerous when he's wrestling, but then people get hurt. So we'll talk about that because I'm I got an opinion on that too, but I'll leave that alone for right now. The match was still good though. The match was awesome. So and why do people call is calling the coup de gras the coup de grace? Like what is that? Can we not do that? It is not the Coop de Grace. Why are people calling it the Coop de Grace? Stop doing that. That is just awful. I think somebody misspelled it once and then they and then other people have just been kinda of calling it that and it's like no. No, it's called the Coup de Gras and I'm in need for people to just stop it. Get your life together. So I that's my digression on that one. Lord knows. <sighs> I think I'm random or even. <laughs> I think I get into this random off, random and radium, but I just have to say these things, man. I've been waiting for these moments. Like, I've been waiting for this moment. So, and Finn Balor is awesome. Can we please give him a round of applause for how great he is? He deserved it. I didn't think that they were going to actually give him the universal title, though. That was a surprise to me. I thought it was going to go to Seth, and he was going to be the face of the company, and, you know, it was just going to be all Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins, but they shocked me. I was actually very shocked by that, that Finn was the winner? What? I hate that belt. I can't stand that belt because it looks like the other one, but with a different strap color. 
Like, are you kidding me? It is the same exact design with a different strap color. I really actually thought that WWE was going to be way more creative than that and create something totally different and unique for Raw to have. But no. No, no, no. We're going to have a, the same belt of a different color. Are you kidding me? That's like buying like three of the same shirts in different colors. Like, just why? Why is that even necessary? Like, have a different color, buy a different style. That's my thing. So, like, please, why do you have these, this, this belt, the same exact design as the other one? Changing the words does not make it different. Not at all. I don't get it, but that ain't for me to understand. Uh, all I know um, is Finn won the title, and that's, that made me happy on the inside. Yeah, I, I didn't think they were going to bet on Finn. To be honest no, with you, I did not, no. I did not say they were going to bet on Finn. I thought this was going to be Rollins. Like I thought it was going to be Reigns. At the, I thought it was going to be Rollins and Reigns at the pay-per-view, and it wasn't. Um, and that was a pleasant surprise. Right. All in all, pleasant surprise. Um, I was impressed uh, with some things both parties did. Um, I see a few more good matches out of everybody involved. Right. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, uh, Airs. <sighs> that belt is weird looking, but hey, it's the belt. And I rock with it, right? I don't. Sorry, I can't. I'm going to need for them to change the design. Like, if you're going to have a belt for Raw, create a belt that is specifically, uniquely created for Raw. Thank you and good night. Like, <laughs> I can't stand it. I can't keep. And I'm going to tell you why later. But I can't right now. Like, you know, at first I was for it when they had showed it at SummerSlam. I was like, yes, like, that's actually all right, you know, because it looks just like the other one, but it's just a different. The strap color brings it out so much. I think that the red is greatness, but I'm going to tell you why I can't stand it now later. So let's talk about the next thing, please. Like, we're getting them because we still have some matches left in the pay per view that we still need to discuss. So I think that we need to continue before I keep talking about this belt and how much I can't stand it. Like, oh, it's just wrong. It's just wrong, man. So it looks good on Finn's shoulder until, you know. <sighs> Honey. And then, and then, so, Ruth says some Roman. Can we talk about that? Let's talk about how excited that was. Because that match didn't even happen. Like, that is something that I was impressed by. Yes. The fight before the match happened was so intense. They didn't even have the match. They were like, you know what? We're just not going to do this. We're not going to do this at all. Can we just not? That, to me, was awesome. I'm not going to lie. It's been a while since I've seen something like that, but that means that this is going to continue for a minute. So, Roman come out there, I was tough. They had him going for the United States Championship. Uh, it was, I'm not totally disagreeing with that, but still, like... The match didn't even happen, Keith. Like, it didn't even happen. Like, the refs didn't even ring the bell. Like, that just never happened. They were fighting so bad that they just was like, you know what? Freak it. We're just going to have to, we're just going to stop all this all together. That was funny. It was actually hilarious to me. So, going out there looking all shocked, you know, the crowds, and they're just looking crazy. Because you don't know how to respond to that. Rusev's fault? Of course it was. But 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fine to that. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I I thought that pre-match brawl. Here's the thing. They got a match out of them without actually having to get a match out of them. Right. And I, you know, it sold a story. Rusev keeps the belt. I don't think Roman. I don't know if they were ready for Roman to be United States champion, which it kind of left him with a little out clause later, and we'll we'll find that out on the on the back end. But um, yeah. So that happened. Uh, and of course, you know, Lesnar, Andy Orton ended in a TKO. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Hey, man. Yeah, because it led to something else that really went out of hand and went crazy later on that night. Right. But, yeah. So, um, that, that went down and, whew. Uh, it was a solid match. Uh, they really sold it. I thought that Orton had gave you the, the pressure that he had a chance to win late in, late in the match. Uh, I think it was a wonderful match put on by the class of 2002. Right. Uh, the class of 2002 showed tonight why they are the shining stars of classes in the WWE rookie class. Because <laughs> three, three, three members of the class is on the card. You know what I mean? Right. Two guys in the main event. And this is what they held this for the main event. Not the titles. This was what it made. And I I thought they turned in a good performance with it. I thought they turned a really good performance with it. And Brock did what Brock does. And but then the finish got a little walky. And um, but that was planned apparently. It looked like something went too far, and maybe that's the presentation that they wanted to give. But uh, it it went a little wry, and uh, it it sparked some it sparked some stuff. Yeah. Uh, but with that, uh, what we're gonna do is we'll take our break here. We'll flip it up on the back end and come back, and we will talk some more uh, wrestling. And we will get you caught up in the week. And we'll get you done with news and notes. So Yay! We'll be caught up. How's your head, Randy? <laughs> you know, I saw what Brock did to you. Yeah. And I saw... The look in your eyes changed, man. Completely blank. But there's nothing like laying there with your head busted wide open to help you remember that you are just a man, Randy. You, you are a great man, but still just a man. A man who hurts, a man who suffers, a man who dies. <laughs> but me, Randy, I am not just a man. I am a God. And a God, Randy, can never die. But don't you worry. You're going to find out all about it in time. So we are back on the back end, and we are for here for our usual and fun segment that we call Birthdays. Birthdays! All right, Keish. Uh... Today is the 24th when we record, so it'll come out on the 25th. Uh, let's see. But I'll, I'll go back. Because, like, do you realize April, August 22nd, which was Monday? Mm-hmm. Was uh Had a ton of birthdays. Really? Yeah. I'll go down the last. Stevie Ray, Booker T's brother, what half a heart of meat. Hey, hey. Had a birthday. Stevie Ray turned 58. Uh, Precious Paul Ellery. 
uh, what uh, the manager of the Road Warriors and current manager of those big muscle goons at NXT. Uh, my name slipped me right now. Uh, Paul Ellery turns 63. Uh, Jimmy and Jay Uso also had a birthday this Monday. The Usos turned 31. Really? Yeah. Uh, Neville turned 30. Also on Monday. So on Monday Night Raw, right? Mm-hmm. You could have had a birthday party for the Usos and Neville. Um, you couldn't have had it for Apollo Crews because he was on SmackDown. But his birthday also is on Monday. So that's four dudes on the active roster. Not to mention you got a manager and a, you know, a future Hall of Famer. Yeah, like seven dudes, birthdays all was Monday. Then there's no birthdays yesterday. Then today, the 24th, was none other than number one broadcaster of all time, Showtime Funaki. Hey! I love Funaki. He's awesome. uh, A birthday today. Soul Man Rocky Johnson. Mm. You also know him as The Rock's Daddy. Rocky Johnson turns 72. If my numbers are looking at me correctly. Yes, 72. Yeah, 72. But, but, Keish, not to be outdone, there's a man who turned 73 today. Really? Yes. And who is this man? He the man who started this gangster shit. And this is the thanks that he get. Vincent Kennedy McMahon turned 73 today. Wow, man. No, sorry. 71. My bath is all jacked up. Rocky Johnson turned 72. Vince turned 71. Right. Sorry. Just just off by a few numbers, everybody. So, yeah, it was Vince's birthday today. Um, and tomorrow, which is when the show will be released, the 25th on Friday, uh, it would be the late Crash Holly's birthday. And that's pretty much it of note. Uh, well, if you want to talk about su- Sunday, I think the 27th is Sergeant Slaughter's birthday. Well, no, Saturday. I'm sorry. Saturday would be the 27th. And that would be Sergeant Slaughter's birthday. And then after that, it ain't really that important. We'll be coming up on next weekend. Then next week, we'll cover that show with other people's birthdays, right? So let's get to the news. Please, Jesus. Let's so, talk about Kish, that. At the end of the show, not the end of the show, at the end of uh, this that last segment, we talked about the Randy Orton match with Brock Lesnar. It was brutal. Bro- Brock just pouted, pouted, pouted. Randy is bloody. Randy is hurt. Randy is hurt bad. It's a TKO. Uh, well... Somebody was not told that that's how this match was supposed to end. His name is one Christopher Jericho. Of course. And he was a, in the back pissed. He rolled up to Gorilla because he was concerned. He was really worried for Randy. Like, he thought this shit had went too far. And uh, Brock came back through Gorilla, and they got into it. I mean, really into it. I mean, there's reports that somebody might have pushed somebody. And when I say maybe Jericho pushed Brock, there's a report that maybe, you know, they got head-to-head, face-to-face. Somebody said, if you go, either you need to hit me or kiss me. Or, I mean, it just, it got crazy. And, yeah, uh, real quick. Vince, had, Vince got that back there, had to break it up. Triple H had to break it up. And it was just, it got crazy, right? All right. Uh, Vince was pissed. And... But Triple H was there, and then Triple H had to say he had to take somebody side because Vince was like kind of mad at Jericho. But then Triple H had to say, "Hey, no, nah, it's Brock's fault because Jericho just had a concern. Brock went too far." Right. It, it just went crazy in the backstage. Now, word on the street is that Jericho is now kind of becoming a quasi hero in the back room because what well, you know, Brock's a part timer. 
And Jericho's a part timer, but he's a part timer that comes in and does time. Brock's a part timer that comes in like one shot, one kill. You know the deal. <laughs> right. Uh, basically, Jericho standing up, you know, kind of was like, whoa. Everybody thought it took guts because you did just stand up to a UFC champion who probably could have. I don't know. But it went, it went no back down to Chris. And uh, which has been known, Chris has been known not to have no back down. And he went at he went at Brock because he was concerned about Randy. Randy comes backstage, you know, getting stitched up and all that. He assured Chris that was a part of the finish. He knew what was going on. Brock did not take any liberties with him. That 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 was what was supposed to happen. It was supposed to look like that. It was supposed to be horrifying. That that was an interesting turn of events. Awesome. Yeah. Um, also, Joey Styles got released for the WWE. Uh, Joey Styles, a uh, former ECW announcer. Uh, he did a lot of work with WWE.com. That was his thing lately. Like, he worked backstage and worked with the WWE.com people. Uh, basically, a lot of stuff. He made some disparaging remarks about people and their abilities and things that he thought Oh, a few interviews, and it's kind of funny because, like, when you a WWE talent and you do these interviews, whether they for a radio station, a podcast, a series, they got to get cleared by the WWE before you do them, right? Right. And that's that I know as a podcaster because in submitting requests and stuff like that, you know, we got to go through the channels, and of course, nobody has been approved to do our podcast yet. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, you know, just going through the submission process is a little bit of an arduous task. But uh, once you do it, you know, they they still in control of some things. Nah, but hey, you ain't in control of that talent. And Joey got there and just started riffing. He started talking about how the dot-com people wouldn't appreciate as much. It just got bad. And he just, hey, somebody said, you can't come back to work, dog. Mm, mm, mm. Awesome. Man, don't don't get fired on your day off. Hell no. Don't do it, Jesus. It ain't worth it. Um also update to the news. Sasha Banks injury will not require a back. Uh if, if for those of you who don't know, Sasha Banks was injured at the pay per view uh, in her match against Charlotte. Right. And she is gonna have to spend some time on the shelf. That's one of the reasons why the belt had to go over to Charlotte. But it will not be as bad as we thought it was, and Sasha will not have to uh, undergo back surgery, which is back surgery is huge. That's huge. Like, the last thing you want somebody to do is to cut open your back. Exactly. The last thing. Yeah, you, you mess around with that spine? All I need you to do is, uh, you know, mess, mess up with a disc or something. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I'm less uh, down with that shit, I'm telling you. But I'm glad that she doesn't need it and that she will. I hope she does recover very, very soon. Yeah. Because I miss her already. Trust me. Yeah. Um. Uh, also, speaking of injuries, Universal... WWE champion, well, he's not anymore, Finn Balor. Uh, we'll get into it when we talk about Raw, but had to relinquish his title um, that he won at SummerSlam. Uh, he hurt his shoulder in the match with Seth Rollins. It will require surgery, which I think he actually has already undergone and will be out six months. Uh, if you want to know how tough a guy is, he broke his shoulder and popped it back into place during the match. Man. And then, like, he dislocated it, popped it back into place, and finished the match. How do you do that without squirming? That hurt me. Uh, it ain't even happened to me. Adrenaline. That's the only thing I can put you to give you an idea. I have pain tolerance, man. I don't. Oh, sweet Jesus. Mm. All right, but uh, so yeah, 
And also, it's go back to difference, Keith. One thing about that Baylor injury, um, Seth Rollins is, go, is starting to become known as the injury man. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's like, true. He's going to be known as the guy who put people on the shelf. And I think that's something that's going to people are going to start looking at. Right. And I think it's going to be kind of interesting what's going to happen with that. Because that's the last right. reputation I want is the injury man. Right. Because it's kind of saying you fuck it up somewhere. Right. Exactly. That's what it's kind of saying. It's kind of saying you fuck it up. Um, but let's get into it. Let's go to Raw. So, Baylor's forced to relinquish the Universal title. Um, and everybody wants a shot. Like, seven dudes came down to the ring because they wanted a shot. Keisha liked it. I did, too. So like, I, mean, like kinda, I liked it because the title was important. Right. People wanted to be champion. Like, it wasn't just the usual suspects, either. Even though the usual suspects didn't show up. But it wasn't just them. And it wasn't uh, just them being considered. And it wasn't just them that was uh, showing this was showing their face to say, hey, I want that. It wasn't just them. And that's the exciting part about it. Right? This chase for it and the people that's gathering around to chase for it and those are saying that I need that. And Yeah. Yeah. It's getting real. <laughs> it is getting real. So... Mm. I'm just excited to see who else decides to go ahead and jump off the bandwagon. You know what I mean? Right. But, uh, so last night we had a series of matches that, uh, would set up. Basically, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be a fatal four way next Monday for the title. The matches that were set up were you narrowed know, down to who's going to be in a fatal four way, right? Uh, our first match, Seth Rollins took on Sami Zayn in a qualifying match. Keith, sometimes I watch Sami Zayn, you know what I think? What? He, he could be a poor man's Daniel Bryan. Yeah, true, but, uh, you know, I don't know. Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn at times seems a slight tack, teeny bit overrated. A but, little uh, bit. Yeah, like I mean, I I get how you can really be hyped for him, but at the same time, sometimes it's really more like, are you serious? You know, it's uh, just just a tad bit overrated. You know, a tad. I'm not saying that he's uh, is horrific. It's just kind of like sometimes it's a little bit. It's not even so, sometimes. I I wonder to sit here. And be like, well, sometimes it's just too much, and he needs to tone down. Sometimes it isn't enough, and he needs to to turn it up. You know, like Sammy, yeah, he has some polishing to do as well. So I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. But um, yeah, like I said, I think Sammy Zay could be a poor man's day of bride, but. In the meantime, uh, he lost to Seth Rollins. Rollins is going to the finals. So I don't think you can have a final without Rollins. No, uh, you can't. In the follow-up match, Kevin Owens defeated Neville to move him along. Uh, and quiet as kept, Neville uh, did go plus to the pole pole. Right. But uh, he, uh, they, got, they got it out. Yeah, uh... Barely. <laughs> hey, y'all, barely. I just, I don't know, man. It's, <sighs> it's a toss-up. It is, it, is, it is a toss-up. But right. it but, is uh, what it is. Going down the line, um, so Kevin Owens is in the finals. Uh, right. The New Day, the New Day celebrates 365 days as champs, Keish. Man, has it really been that long already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, they have been held on that long. Uh, I I might saw some shenanigans between the first and second title reigns. Of course. But other than that, that was it. 
Do they rocks? They are awesome. I give them that. They're greatness. Right. Uh, but then they're interrupted by Doc and uh, Carl Anderson. And there's a one-on-one match between Biggie and Carl Anderson, and Biggie promptly disposes of Carl Anderson. Yes, he does. It was greatness. So I was, I was, I was all out for that. And then Titus happened, and I was just kind of like, for real. So, can we talk about Titus O'Neil, please, just for a second? Like, yeah, uh, that was going to be the next thing. Um, <laughs> that was probably the roughest thing I had to watch on yeah. TV. I week. mean, seriously, right? Who idea was to give him a live mic? Right. <laughs> that was like, whoa, shoot, don't ever do that again. That was strike Who number was, one. Don't, don't ever, ever, ever give him a live mic again. That was strike number one. Number two oh. is when you decide to turn him heel. That was track number two right there. I thought Darren Young was going to go heel, but apparently Titus is going to go heel. And first of all, creative has nothing. Creative has nothing. Creative has nothing. Creative has nothing, creative has nothing for you. Right. Nothing. For you. nothing. Because, Lord, I was like, really? He like the day fight again, like, have we been down this road? The primetime players break up and yeah, fight? Yeah, yeah, we have. How Titus beating up Bob Backlund, 80 year old butt? Like, how about shoot, no? And then he, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm the primetime player. Really, Titus? Is that really, like, how we're going to go with this? Like, is this really the road that you're going to enter down? Get yeah, sit down. I have several seats, sir. I can't deal with you right now. I'm not taking you seriously. Like, this is just ridiculous. Like, this is what you're going to do. You're going to start a feud with Darren Young. For what? For what? Like, that was just something they plugged. I feel like, I really feel like with Titus, that was something that they just plugged into the show so they could fill that time slot because there was no other excuse for this. Like, there was no other reason for that. And they had to have known that that was going to happen. Like, come on, man. Seriously? Like, yeah, Titus. No, no, no. Don't no. ever give that man a live mic ever again. Like, just never. Just um, stop it. So, back to the tournament. Big Cass defeats Rusev to advance to the qualifier. Rusev got counted out because his ribs hurt. Right. Uh, now, on a positive note, Keish. So, Sasha's out. So, who is going to be the new hot diva on Raw? Bailey. 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 Bailey makes her main roster debut Monday night. So, she is officially done with NXT. She is on the main roster. She is a part of Raw. Raw has three fourths of the four horse women on the staff now. Right. Uh, I ecstatic that uh, she's there. I think she's going to do really well. Um, it's one of those what took so long. Exactly. Please. But hey, good job holding down the women's division of X too. Right. Hey, all I'm saying is I'm excited and I'm a hugger. So of course, and there's one thing I promote tonight is hugs. So Bailey has my. Full support, okay, 100%. I'm excited about Bailey. I re- that was another thing that I rewatched like five to six times after the day it happened. Like, I cannot stop watching Bailey's debut. Like, it was like, yes, Bailey, yes. I'm excited. I'm too excited yeah. about this situation, yeah. so. Yeah, I think and she's going right for the gusto. Like, she beat Dana Brooke. In her debut, and she is going to go after Charlotte. She's going right for the for the money. Why not? Why not? Why wouldn't you go after that? Like seriously, like why wouldn't this be your goal? Why wouldn't this happen? Like right now, you know? I mean, seriously, like what are you gonna do with her? Like, um, in order for her to get the Charlotte, keep being Dana Brooke every week. Like, I would be too. I would be too. Bailey has the right focus and the right idea. So, 
But it's Bailey, kid. It's Bailey. Like if I hair if my hair was as long as hers, well, it probably is, but it just need to be straightened. Like if if I could do my hair in a ponytail like that, I would. Bailey's awesome. Are you a hugger, Keith? Have you been in the hugger section? They have a hugger section. I want one of those signs. You got to give me one of those signs. That says yeah, hugger section. They have a hugger. Yeah. Yes. Okay, hugger section. Yes. Yeah, I mean we can work that out. Uh, what else goes on after Bailey? Uh, the Dudley Boys retire. Like, is uh, it it for them? Like in total? No, uh, it's official. They, I, I have checked out some things. They are officially departing. They are done. They are done with the WWE. That is it. I mean, I think the thing was for them. They wanted to leave TNA, and they wanted one last run. I think they wanted the belts for it, but they just really wanted one last run. Right. Uh, they're not a part of any active storyline, and this is it. Uh, they signed deals with the company. But they were updated uh, notes on the agenda for the past. Mm. So they made it seem like he just said something new, and all he did was basically just re edition some stuff. Um, right. Well, but they it did was agree. Awesome. They agreed to get beat up at the end of their thing. Right. So they put somebody else over. Uh, I know one thing, and that is. Uh, and I'm going to say it, I'm going to be the first to say it, and I'm going to throw it out there. The Dudleys will be in the Hall of Fame within the next three years. Like, if, if this, this is like it for them, it for them, they'll be in the Hall of Fame within the next three years. I'm already banking on it. I'm already waiting for it. So, kudos. Because they have to be one of the, if not the greatest tag team ever, you know? So. Right, right. Um, so yeah, the Dudley Boys are done. Uh, Roman Reigns defeats Chris Jericho to move on to the final spot in the Fatal Four Way next week. Uh, Keish, that spot I thought was very coveted. Uh, they tried to double team the man, and he fought off the double team to get the win. Right, right, exactly. Uh, who wins? I don't know. Because I can make a case for everybody. Right. We just have to see next week. You know what? I don't even want to guess. I don't want to guess. I don't want to. Uh, uh, I don't want to guess. I don't want to stay here and have to be like, you know, well, maybe it'll be this person, this person. Nope. I just want to see next week. I just want to watch it happen. I don't even. You know, it, it's funny because I don't even have like a favorite. Like I'm just kind of like, let's just see how this goes. You know. Let's just see how this goes and see where it leads. That's pretty much where I'm at with it. So, Raw next week is going to be crazy, though. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, because we're setting up a Clash of the Champions. Right. That is the pay-per-view they're bringing back, Clash of the Champions. Now, I would like them to not do it as a pay-per-view. I would like them to do it. But see, you know why they can't do it as, like, the TV special? Because they run three hours of television programming during the week anyway. Exactly. Right. If they didn't, they could run it as a special and call it Class of Champions. And, you know, it'd be good for the network. But nope, nope, nope. It's going to be strictly on WWE. They're going to make new new money out of it. (laughs) But uh, that happened. Yeah. So then we we shimmy over to SmackDown. SmackDown. I like the fact that we're going to talk about two different shows. Yeah, they call everybody in the ring, and guess what? They got two titles sitting there. They got the new tag team titles and the new women's world title, and yep. they call SmackDown, which I thought is bad branding. Right, exactly. Oh, those belts are horrible. And the only reason why I say that is because there's no difference. Like, it's, it's a difference in color, but that's about it. I I... I I guess for me, I'm looking for like some level of uniqueness. Like, show me a brand new belt. Like, I want to see a brand new design. Like, I mean, brand spanking new, never seen like this happen now type of design. You know, just to just to really set the the shows apart. You know, really separate the two. 
but I digress, you know. I don't make the money to make these things, so, you know, who am I to say, like, oh, this sucks, you know what I'm saying? But it kind of does. Like, the belt themselves, if you're not really paying attention, can be confused for one another. So, you know, I mean, I'm fine with the blue straps and everything, but it's just kind of like, are you serious? And I actually am glad that they're going to have their own champions, you know, like really have their own champions. Uh, So that's going to be exciting in itself. But at the same time, they could have done better with the belt designs. Like, I well, here's the thing. Those tag team titles are terrible because they like the same old tag team titles, right? Yeah, they're terrible. They're always they're always so, going to be terrible. I, I don't like the idea of uh, just repeating those belts. Right. Uh, but let's go out of the card, right? So we got the two two titles. Uh, Becky Lynch moved one step closer to getting to the SmackDown Bigs for the women's title. Right. Uh, the Usos defeat the Ascension in round one of the tag team tournament. That's my pick for uh for the tag team titles, by the way. Um, also in the tag team tournament, American Ooh. Alpha defeated Breeze Dago to advance in their round of the tag team tournament. Now, here's the thing. The most interesting thing I can say that's coming out of all of this is that possibly we could get an American Alpha Uso feud. Yes. Um, they they had a match at the pre-show, uh, SummerSlam, where they were teammates. There was a little tension between them two. Right. I think it's time for the Usos to turn heel. Yes, it is. I think they've been around long enough, and I think they've done that stick long enough. I think they got to learn to diversify the game, turn heel, uh, do things for the most part how you want to do it. I can't wait. Usos and American Alpha Man? Yeah, I think, I think Usos and American Alpha would be an incredible feud. Um, I think it'd be high energy. It'd be a hell of a way to kick off their pay-per-views on SmackDown. Right. And the, the contrast of styles. American Alpha with that college, a lot of holds, a lot of slams, a lot of things that really connect Usos with the half flying and the kicks. It, I think that it'd be an interesting goal. It um, would. And I think to kill the Mockingbird would be that stretch in time to kind of, you know, yeah. with you. I hear what you're saying completely. And I hope that it happens. Oh, I hope that it happens. Because I'm, I'm, I would be one person that would be a huge fan of this situation, you know, especially with the Usos turning heel, like, yes, please, please, like, can we make this happen? But that's why I say that they are going to be my pick for the tag team tournament because if you give them the titles, then, of course, that sets the tone. It sets the tone. I mean, of course, you can always set the tone, with American Alpha having the titles first, but do it with the vets first, you know? Like, and then kind of work your way around it. So. Oh, I get that. Um, so, there, there's also AJ Styles and Dolph Ziggler got into it at SmackDown. <laughs> AJ may have called Dolph Ziggler a loser. Uh, they end up having a match where I didn't really get Keish. AJ Styles, if you win, you are in the main event at Backlash against Dean Ambrose for the world title. Uh, if Ziggler wins, it becomes a triple threat for the title at, Summer, at, at, at Backlash. Keish, what was the incentive to AJ Styles to win or lose? Right. Because don't he still get in? But yeah. Tech, he'll win it, don't put him in. Like, he was in regardless at this point. Right. So, cause that was, no matter how the match ended, he was in. It, they, they didn't compete for the spot, right? Like, hey, the winner gets the spot. That would have made a little more sense in the plot hole. 
but it did. Uh, no, I don't know. I guess I didn't understand the logic behind the whole situation, but <sighs> who am I to sit here and say that it was, I, you know what, I'm going to tell you. It was ridiculous for them to even make the stipulation in the first place because of the fact that it made no sense. Like, what? Okay, so either AJ's in it by himself or AJ's in it with Ziggler. But either way, uh, no, AJ's in it. Am I understanding that correctly? Like, Yeah, that's how I pulled it down. But here's what I'll say, too. Uh, it was a good match. They're going to lose a lot of steam with Ziggler. Like, yeah, yeah. I th- I think people are going to stop taking a roller coaster ride of up and down with him. And they're just going to be like, look, they done. And then they're, they're going to try to find out what to do with that, let's say, a commodity. And then they might be trying to give people what they want, but it's going to be too late. I don't know. All I don't know is um, I like Dolph, and right. I would hate to see him. <sighs> I don't want to say get buried. You know, I don't want to use those words because things like that get talked into existence, and then they actually happen. I just don't want to them to underestimate him like they've been doing, and keep kind of like swatting him to the side a little bit. You know, I was excited for him when he got the match with Dean at SummerSlam. And I hoped that this would continue, you know, because he deserves it. He's been deserving it. But it's just kind of like now, you know, I'm like, are they in this place where they don't know what to do with him anymore? Like, I don't know. It's it's really weird and very frustrating. Uh, and I always wonder, like, are they serious? <laughs> you know, are they taking him seriously? Um, <clears throat> or is he just kind of a placeholder somewhere? You know, I don't need that. No one wants that. So it's, it's going to take a minute, but... At the same time, you know, don't give me Dolph, you know? Like, I want to see Dolph, but I don't want just anything either. I don't. So, I don't know what happened with that and the stipulation in itself and, like, it being so ridiculous. But I guess there might be a plan. We won't know until next Tuesday. So yeah, I mean, here's the thing: Dolph make it because AJ Styles won the match. Dolph Ziggler, so AJ Styles is the sole number one contender. Baby, baby Ziggs finds a way to get back into that match. Right, right, right. But for right now, he's not. It is just D and AJ one on one. Which shout shout to AJ Styles for like. Turning that TNA career into being a prime time money WWE player late game. Um, the talk of SmackDown really wasn't SmackDown. Uh, every week on the WWE Network, they do a segment called Off SmackDown. All you know, all this SM. Oh, I can't believe we almost forgot about that, Keith. Yeah, yeah. So no, um, we can't forget about that. Oh um, my God. Th- have we lost our minds? Like, <laughs> no, no. So we'll play the clip. So here's the clip. Afraid to get hit. Like, well, I, I, re- I, res- I wrestle like, like a coward. You I- wrestle like a coward. I'm the one? If I, if I were to create a wrestler who, to me, like embodies, like when I was an independent guy and I was thinking like, oh, okay, what's the soft WWE style? It would be that. WWE has transformed me, in the you, last... Hold on. You, you, had, you, you had your chance to talk. You, you're the one that called me a coward in, in the wrestling ring. I'm the coward in the wrestling ring. Yeah. But let's talk about cowards for one second. Okay. The reason I wrestle the way I wrestle is because I can do it day in and day out all the time for 10 plus years i have never never in my career ever have been injured i don't get injured for six months to a year i am here each and every week 
But you sit there and call me a coward? Yeah. I'm the coward? Wait, let me tell you about a coward. Let me tell you about a guy who tells his WWE fans, the people that he loves, that he will be back. He promises them. I promise you, I will be back in one year's time to claim this title. But you didn't, Daniel, did you? But I'm the coward. Okay, I'm the one that they, doesn't love if the they, fans. If they would let me come back, I would come back. Oh, they, 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 you, you would? Yeah. yeah. You would. You, you love that WWE ring. You love being wrestling. You love being right in that wrestling ring and you love wrestling, right? Well, yeah. why don't you quit? Why don't you quit and go to the bingo halls with your indie okay, friends? I think you then, need to huh? calm. No, that's, no, not this, that's not what this show's Me about. The GM have this. Thank you very much, Renee. This is a great show, but we're talking here. I need to talk to you real quick because the fact is, you're the one that calls me the coward, but you're the one that doesn't get in the WWE ring again. No, don't you walk away from me, Daniel. Don't you walk away. I'm the one that loves the fans. I'm the one that loves everyone and everything. You're the one that gets up and walks away every single time. You're the coward. I am not a coward. I am your intercontinental champion, and there's a reason I am the title. Reason making this the most relevant, prestigious title that WWE has, and I deserve okay. the respect okay. on SmackDown Live. Get that camera right here. Get that camera right here. Understand that this is day 141 of the never-ending Intercontinental Championship World Tour, and I swear to you, I promise you, it will be the most relevant title on SmackDown Live. I could care less about those little kids on, on, on for the tag team titles and the Women's Championship and the WWE Championship. This is my show. My show. And I'm sick of all of you, my GM, sitting there criticizing me, calling me the coward. You're the cowards. I'm the one here, day in and day out, in that wrestling ring, beating people up. Thank you very much. Okay, so here on the back here, Keish. Woo! Uh, yeah. A lot's going on there. Uh, oh, that's Daniel an understatement. And Miz get into it. Doing talking smack, and honestly, a lot of people felt bad for Daniel Bryan, Keish. Yeah, you know who didn't? Miz. No, this guy. Me, I didn't feel bad for me. Here's why they feel bad. You told that man to his face. He t he wrestled like a coward. Right. I don't know that to be true or not, but that's what you said to him in front of all the national TV, in front of all the fans, his or others. I think that struck a nerve. I, I don't know. Okay. Here's my thing. And I'm going to, me being a little, I think that struck a nerve that it wasn't supposed to strike. Okay. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not saying that, of course, because of the obvious, but I think that really hit somewhere that it wasn't supposed to. You know? I don't know if this was set up for him to say something like that or what, but I really think that got a little, little deeper than it should have. Like, I think so. there was some feelings hurt. Like, I, I'm just saying. Like, it, whew, I could, that whole thing sent me to chill down my spine. Like, I felt that. I, oh. I thought it was, here's the thing. And they call it a promo because I mean, even when wrestlers go off on each other, they cut. They call it cutting a promo. Um, I I don't know if it was a work shoot or if it just got real. Right. Ren Renee Young started panicking. Maurice started looking kind of crazy. I thought shit got real. Right. But you told that man he wrestled like a coward. Everything after that is up to him. And he went back at you. He was like, "Yo," and he has a point. In ten years, what have you know Miz to be out for injury? Right. Exactly. They, um, he has it. And, I mean, he wrestles a style that he feels is comfortable for him. He keeps it in the ring. You don't see Miz diving out of a lot of things. Um, and it works for him. It's functional for him. A lot of people don't really be like, oh, Miz suck in the ring. No one does. Like, so, no one does that. I think some people, especially the smaller guys, felt like they have to push a boundary to make a statement because they're smaller. And I think sometimes they've sacrificed their bodies in, on the long run for it. Um, and the thing is, you know how Vince don't already trust little guys? Stuff like how Baylor got injured and stuff like that? He ain't going to want to trust little dudes with the belt. 
Um, and that's just kind of like what the way it is sometimes. But I, ooh, ooh, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Um, and this election, I can't go vote for the other guy. But no, <laughs> Miz went in there and he he held his ground and he has he had points. Right. He was like, you know, you the you the one who wants to. He told Daniel Bryan, "Hey, if you really love wrestling, what you say you do, you quit this cushy job, working in the office, go down to one of these indie promotions, and work a Nashville match or something like that." You know what I mean? Right. But yeah, of course you don't want to get sick. To, you know. Yeah, he ain't gonna do that. But it's like, um, but I have to honestly agree. Uh, he made. Very, very valid point. I am not mad whatsoever at what Miz said. Not one bit. I would sit here and lie and say, like, I felt sorry for Daniel. I didn't. Because you sat there and told that man that his wrestling style, the way that he's been keeping himself together for the last 10 years, was wrestling like a coward. And that's not right. It's not right, you know? Because, just because um, other wrestlers of his size and stature have decided to put their bodies on the line, you know, just to make this thing happen, doesn't mean that he had to do the same thing. And he doesn't. doesn't. Miz wrestles just fine without having to do all that high flyer shit. Like it's he's it's not like he sucks. <laughs> like like I think that's something that not no, it's only a, it's, it's you, something about his aura that sucks. Like right. I guess what I figure out it. it's something about him that people particularly just don't like. And maybe that's just probably being a good heel, right? Exactly. But quiet has kept business put together a Hall of Fame career. And you can't deny him that. You can't, Grand Slam you can't deny them, him that. Grand Slam champion. I'm going down to the numbers, right? Former world champ. Got to remember, he had last WrestleMania 27. Five-time Intercontinental champion. Former United States champion. He wins three tag team titles. He won it with Sandow. He won it with Big Show. And he won it with Morrison. Right. He has a total of 14 title reigns for his career. He's the 25th Triple Crown Champion and the 14th Grand Slam Champion. Um, he's won a Slammy Award. He's won Money in the Bank. And he starred in a couple of eight movies. I think that's going to put him over. He's, the guy's going to the Hall of Fame when he's done. He is. He is. And and it's funny because there's going to be a lot of people that's going to disagree with that and be like, he don't deserve it. Miz hasn't done anything to be in a Hall of Fame. He don't deserve to be in a Hall of Fame, but he does. He does. He has had that career. You know, there's people, and it, it's funny because I can possibly, there's a lot, there's people in the Hall of Fame, people have questioned, like, oh, my God, why? But I don't question this one. I don't question the notion of him being in the Hall of Fame. I would I you know what? I'm just gonna my personal opinion is I question what Daniel was thinking when he told him that. You know, like where in your right mind do you feel it is okay for you to tell another wrestler, you know, that the way that he wrestles is cowardly because he doesn't want to be like everybody else. You know, we just seen a perfect example of what can happen in situations where you throw your body on the line. Perfect example. You know, People get hurt all the time, and it's understandable, but sometimes those those injuries are things that could have been prevented. 
period. And he had every right to say the things that he said, and he had every right to go off the way that he did. Because you tell, you give me one, show me one person that wouldn't have acted or reacted in the same way. But, um, like I said, here's the thing. I think that that might have lifted off his character. Like, I WWE.com has been sh- sharing that video everywhere. It's all over YouTube. I think you talk about stock going up. Stock went up on a post uh, show interview like crazy. Right. And I hope they capitalize on it. And, they need um, to. And the thing is, he, he earned a lot of people's respect. Because I think a lot of people looked at him and said, wow, I may not like that guy, but I respect what he's saying. Right. Um, but with that. Uh, we gonna turn this in and wrap this up, and we gonna catch y'all next week as we get prepared for. I think we'll probably get prepared for backlash first. Yes, and, yes uh, we are. I think there's a, a little bit of space in between time, in the meantime, and you do your thing, and I will do mine, and uh, we will catch y'all on the other side. Bye.